Hello, still the people, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Trey. We have a lot to do, so let's go. This is where we left off last week. We had a tight pencil of all the characters, lore in the center. He's being accosted by some bandits, some thieveries going on, and some retribution for <laughs> his assault. And then we have some light background concepts, right? This is a tree. We got some loose perspective and other stuff going on. And this is where we were before. This right here is the sketch version that we did two weeks prior to get to the tight pencils. Now of note, I used photo reference of myself, making faces, doing poses of the various bandits, all of that I wanted to get a better feel of. So in taking, I shot the video of myself, I cut those up, into screenshots and then use those to draw all of the characters. There's a little bit of all of this in all of the characters. And photo reference is a great way to get your ideas out, to try to get something that you like, to try different posing, different uh, facial expressions, all of that. This is where we stopped last week. And I did a... All right, these are the touchstones. Conan, The Witcher, and Vampire Hunter D. This is going to be inked. This is lore. And we'll have some more examples of lore. But this... Cursed by a unicorn, lore of the silver hand. All right, here are the inks of what we're going for. Pepe Larez. We have Mark Schultz. And Frank Frazetta. This is what we're going for. This, if we get anywhere close in the ballpark, that would be a win. So let's get back to it. So this is, I have this scratch sheet just to have an idea of placement, where everything is. And I have a larger sheet. Well, I had to split up into twos to fit onto 11 by 17, but a scratch sheet is just, you know, you put off to the side to look at for reference. The 11 by 17 image is in two pieces, and now I have to transfer this to uh, this comic book page inking Strathmore sheet. It's going to be 11 by 17 the long way, uh, horizontal and now I have to get it down I was going to you know ink it with the light the light table but I because using the light table is difficult to see on camera I thought I'll just do it by by hand hand right it gets so we're gonna speed through my taking the image and then transferring it to the sturdier inking paper. So let's go. Now I have most of it down. I have the characters and figures placed pretty much where I want them. And now it's time for, I think, to get the background in order. There's a lot of nuances for the background, but it's not too 
I'm not really going to focus on that because I want to focus more on the characters than anything. But still, backgrounds give it a sense of grounded groundedness, a sense of place. So let's continue. The background is pretty much in a good place. It's a forest scene. I like to have tight pencils and save those just in case I want to do something with it later or manipulate it or even if I want to draw, draw it again. But this is where we came from. This is the tight pencils. And I pretty much like how it how it is. I used a mechanical pencil to get nice, clean, sharp lines. And it'll be transformed by the inking stage. The inking always adds a little something. It kind of pluses it in my opinion. The tight pencil is nice, but it's not the final form. So now that we have the tight pencils, let's go over my inking process. For lore, I try to do, I'm not the greatest at inking, but I usually do ink wash, various labels, and then add the the black blacks, the dark blacks on top of that. All right, so ink washes go light first and then gets dark, deeper and deeper. And then for the final, I go in with the, the deep, the deep saturated blacks. That's how I usually do it. I think I'm going to continue with that for this. I have these microns and copics for details, which I usually do after a brush. But today I'm going to use this thing that I have been saving, which is a series seven sable number three brush that I have had for years and have never, <laughs> never used. I was too afraid. So <laughs> I think I have three of them, yeah. I had just kept buying them, but I wouldn't use them because I wanted to get to like a, a certain level of skill. It's just one of those, one of those things. I was being too precious with it. But I'm going to use this one. And I'm scared to use it. But, you know, I had been using regular brush pens and <laughs> other disposable brush pens just to get to a level where I think I could use I could use this. But now this year I want to transition into an actual brush brush. Because I hear you can get thick and thin and nice clean details all with one brush if I can get to that level. But I have these for detailing, uh, various sizes, but the brush is what I want to mainly use. Now for inks, I have three different bottles of ink. They're kind of old, but I I think they're still usable. I have this sheet on the side that I can, if you have too much ink on your brush, you can get it off with this scrap piece of paper. And I have a cloth to wipe the ink down at the end to get excess off 
before I wash the brush. And I've learned to wash my brush after every every inking session to keep it clean and it makes the brush last long. The brush lasts longer. So I have this, which is a holder for the ink so it doesn't tip, which could be catastrophic if your ink bottle tips over and ruins all of the work that you've done. So I have this dark and this little watered down, which has the blue tape on it. Right. So I, I know where I, which one's which. And this is lots of water and some ink. So I'm gonna use this darker one first and we'll see if it's too concentrated because it's been out here for a while and if not I'll switch to the more slightly watered down now before you start inking it's always good to do some tests on a scrap piece of paper just to get you know a feel of the the ink on paper and sometimes I get the jitters and have to work that out but just do some some slight lines sometimes your hands will shake sometimes it's too concentrated sometimes it's too uh, <laughs> too watery so you're trying to find that right balance of everything All right this is the slightly watered down the blue tape on it very watered down Make sure that you secure the tight the cap on tight just in case we don't need no accidents right now all right so this holder keeps it from tipping and it's just i cut it with an exacto knife this sturdy board i shake up my ink not too roughly but mostly in a circular motion just to to mix it up, things that might have, might have settled down at the bottom and you want a nice consistency. And at first I try to see how far to dip it. Now you don't want it to go to the stomach. The stomach of the brush is the metal part and you don't want to get your ink all the way up to that. So I try to keep it you know, halfway to, you know, the tip. I try not to go past halfway for the, the inks on the brush. And a scrap piece of paper is great for wiping excess. But I think we just might be good to go. So let's get started. Okay, I think we are ready. Let's see how this goes. I haven't inked in a little bit, but I think this should be good. This is what I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn. So again, we test out with the scratch. And I think this is a little bit too concentrated, but we'll give it a shot. Now, I usually start with my lead character because it's always a breaking of the seal. I figure if I can get my lead character down satisfactorily, then the rest is cake. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> so I always go for my, my main hero first no matter what position he's a, he is on the paper, because I usually go, I ink from upper left to lower right. But no matter where the my hero is, I usually start with my hero. Now, probably like last week, I'll do time-lapse 
at certain points so we can move this along because this is going to be long. This is going to be my time, hours and hours and hours. And I will not bore you with <laughs> all of that. So I have my music in the background and I'm jamming out and I, I just go take your time, be patient, don't be in a rush, you know, take it easy breezy and then just put in the, <laughs> put in the hours. Uh, and I, I could do this all day, which is great. You know, some, you got to take breaks. I figured two, two hours is the maximum. After two hours, you know, wash your brush, take a break, have some lunch, a snack, take a moment, you know, because sometimes you tighten up. Sometimes I hold my breath when I'm inking and all of that thinking, and, you know, trying to get the best image possible can, you know, you're putting, you're putting your energy somewhat of your soul into this and you need breaks. That this should be interesting. So yes, yeah, so I, I do the hero first and we'll do some time lapse on this until we get to the where I want the, his character lore and then the other characters I'll probably do off screen and I'll show you the result or maybe little little bits of it and I'll show you the result at the end
So now I have the main character inked. I always start with the hero, the lead, because if I, I figure if I can get him right, everybody else will fall into place. <laughs> it's just a, a belief I have. And usually, usually hasn't steered me wrong. So I have all the, the outlines mostly of my main hero. So let's move on to the, the bandits. Now, what I've noticed with the bandits is that I am a little freer, a little looser, and a little quicker with everyone else. I don't know exactly what it is, but maybe once I have the, my lead, I know I'm pretty much set. And then whatever else happens, happens, as long as I'm happy with my lead. So then I move on to the other characters, quicker, a little looser in style. Also, one of the best parts about the villains is that you can do them in styles or you can be experimental with them. They're not so precious to you. And so you can do goofy expressions. You can make their looks a little bit more out there and wild. I think this character right here is one of my standouts. Usually when you're in the middle of something, something clicks and you kind of latch on to one thing or think something is cooler than other things. I like the look of this. It's the expression mostly, I think. I think the expression got me. And yeah, once I had him, I was like, okay, okay, this, this might be, this might be kind of, whatever happens, happens, but this one might be my favorite guy or of the, the bandits. I just like the expression. So once I have all the characters done, then I move on to the background. Sometimes I go with minimal backgrounds and just focus mostly on characters. For this one, I wanted to push myself. I wanted to take it the full, go all the way with it. So I'm doing the, the backgrounds. The backgrounds are looser, are, well, 
they, in some ways they're extremely loose. And I just try to get it down. And since there's a lot of randomness in real life, in nature, it's just random bits and bobs everywhere with different, you know, erosion and I guess just chaos. <laughs> you know, in, in nature, everything moves and shifts and decays and, you know, all at the same time at different levels. And there's so much detail. And how do you get that detail of the real world into onto the page? And so I just noodle and doodle and, you know, I have this washed ink. It's not very concentrated. And then after this, I'll do a pen and just noodle and doodle with that. But this is the background process. One of my favorite things to draw are trees. And that extends to ink, I guess, but just so many different types of trees and they all look, they can look menacing. They can look flowy and gentle. Uh, they can look sturdy and straight, thick and stable. I, I'm just going off, I don't know what, <laughs> but yeah. It, Nature, nature I think is cool in general, but trees, water also, water's kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah, let's, let's continue.
So after, with this noodling, doodling, I just make it up as I go. If I see something in the picture, I draw it. If I, you know, I'm not too focused or concerned, I just go in and, and do it. But this is <laughs> how I've, I've learned to do backgrounds. You know. It's fun, it's kind of meditative, I guess. It's, I could do this all day, it's just how it is. But once that's done, I return back to the characters and then I use my small pens to get down the final details of my main character. Again, I start first. And this is the fun part because it you can see it or I can see it. I know what it is. I'm not, I start to loosen up. I'm not as tight at the end as I was in the beginning because I, I have most of it down. And now it's clean up, refinement, noodling, and just kind of having fun with what you've made.
So then after all that detail, after all these little marks that probably people won't even notice, <laughs> which it's more for you than the viewer, if you have the time, uh, just go for it, see what happens. But after all of that, this is the final piece. Well, the final type pencil, well, call it type pencils, the final inking. It's clean. Uh, it's all mostly outlines, some detail. Well, I say a lot of detail, but you know, I'm not crazy with it. So then I could take this into watercolor or digital paint. That's why I try to keep a clean version of this. But unfortunately, that also means that I'm not done with this. Not by a long shot. So next week, I'm going to be doing my ink washes and all of that. But this is where I'll stop for this week. This is this is what we got. I like it. So that's how it is. But let's recap, shall we? This is where we started this week. We started with just the, I would, it would between a, a sketch and a tight pencils, but I had all the information down that I needed. And once I had everything down, I printed it out. I, you know, have a scratch piece just in case, you know, you need to check it. And after I you know, drew on, have my inking paper, tighten, this is what I would call tight pencils. You know, it's clean, it's visible, it's legible. I got all of it, my hero in blue, enemies in red, background, all of it. And then after that, I start the character inking starting with the hero I get him down once I get him down then the villains I, I can get looser and faster with it it's just you know time and the number and the figures then after that you put in the background a lot of noodling and doodling so I have my foreground, middle ground, background, which I always have fun with. And this is what we have. This is what we worked on all week. A lot of it. <laughs> I chopped up a lot of film for this, but this is what it takes. It's, it's time intensive. It's, it's really fun though. It's, this is why I love art. And this right here is the scan of it so that you can see all of it, not at a slight angle. And this is the final tight pencil, clean inked version. All the, everything's there. I just need to ink wash. And if I want to take it to watercolor later, I can do that. If I want to do digital paint, I can do that too but it's all here. So that is lore for the week. And next week we shall do the postmortem slash the end. This has to be the end, right? Has to be the end. So I would like to thank you for watching, hanging in there with me, watching all this wackiness go on, and I will see you in the next video. So take care, keep shining. Bye-bye.